According to reports published by Adobe, over the last couple of months, it's like Black Friday every day for a lot of folks. Now that's both good for some, but terrible for others. So pull yourself up a chair and let's talk about it. We all know this is a strange time and you don't need me to tell you that. There are some obvious changes to how we buy things that just make sense in all of this. The huge spike in online grocery ordering and BOPIS, buy online, pick up in store, have been catapulted forward by at least a decade. Restaurants and brick and mortar retailers, on the other hand, have a yet undetermined amount of damage. It's gonna be bad though, catastrophic for so many businesses. As bad as those business struggles are going to be, they're understandable with the current state of the world. It's also obvious that those other methods of buying would have an increase in adoption. Anyone could have seen that coming once we understood that we were all going to be stuck at home. There are other things, however, that were a little less foreseeable. Now, where's this data coming from that we're gonna discuss? Adobe has something they call the Digital Economy Index, or DEI. Now here's Adobe's own words on the source of the data. The DEI is based on over a trillion anonymized and aggregated visits to retail websites and tens of millions of product SKUs from 80 of the top US 100 retailers. I know it's anonymized, so it's not as big of a deal as what some of these platforms do, but man, is Everybody watching us, if you think you have privacy on the internet, get that thought completely out of your head. Someone's watching you at all times, but back to the data. According to Adobe, they're getting their data from 80 of the top 100 retailers. Now that means this data is coming from exclusively big stores. Now if you're seeing something different from smaller shops than what we discussed in this video, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear that insight. Now what we're looking at here is April's Digital Economy Index, and that data showed that buy online, pick up and store orders were up 208% compared to the same time last year. As mentioned before, just makes sense. We're all stuck at home and wanting to limit our exposure to the outside world. How else are we gonna buy all that local stuff that we need? I doubt that many of us will ever go back to the old method of shopping for groceries. This is the new normal. Now my wife had started using the buy online pickup at our local Kroger well before all of this happened. However, it was just occasional. Now, I just don't see us going back to roaming around a grocery store. It's just stupid. I don't wanna spend half my day trying to figure out where they put the pepperonis. Seriously, is it in the meat section? No. Is there an Italian section? No. The one brand of pepperoni I want is in a display made out of cardboard in some random spot in the back of the store next to the cheese, which makes perfect sense. How in the world did I not just intuitively know where that pepperoni was at? A shift in how we buy groceries could have an interesting impact on how grocery stores operate. Do they continue to carry the variety they currently have or do they free up space to carry more of the items that sell well so they aren't substituting my sourdough bread for white bread? It's not even close to the same Kroger. It's not even close, but let's stay on topic. I'm getting a little too heated about grocery shopping, which shows how frustrating of a task that is, which is why I don't think we're going back from this. Overall, E-commerce sales grew 49% compared to early March, before the state of the world got completely out of hand. Online grocery sales are obviously a big part of that, being up 110%. But we're also seeing a 58% spike in sales of electronics, partly because we need more at-home entertainment, but also probably because of all the people trying to get the stuff they need to work from home like they should have been doing in the first place. Welcome to the future of work for all you first time work from homers. Just note, it's usually a lot more fun when there's not some crisis forcing you to stay at home for months at a time. So just because it sucks now, doesn't mean you shouldn't give it a try under more normal circumstances. You just might like it. Note that the increase in demand combined with supply chain issues may cause an increase in price for things like electronics. Now they're pretty much all made in China these days and they've been hit hard. So get your electronics now if you need them or note that you may have to pay more for them later if you can get specific items at all. One of the big surprises from the DEI is that consumers actually have an increased purchasing power of 4.1% compared to the same time last year. That means right now, for $100, you can buy the same amount of crap that would have cost you $104 last year. Congratulations, you're rich. I know, it's $4. 
But it's a surprise because typically an increase in demand with limitations in supply leads to an increase in prices like we're expecting for electronics. So obviously, this must be fueled by some extremely large industry that's not seeing a demand increase and is reducing prices to try to offset an actual decrease in demand. Adobe speculates that industry is apparel. Who'd have thunk it? If we all stay home and we don't go out to work and bars and dates and whatnot, then we all end up buying a lot less clothing. Pro tip, just be like me. I just bought seven shirts and pants just like these I'm wearing, one for every day of the week. There are no choices to be made about what to wear. You only have the brain capacity for so many decisions each day. So if you make a lot of decisions, just eliminate the ones that don't really matter. Wear the same thing every day. Not literally the same thing every day because that's disgusting and you need to wash your clothes. But if you get multiple versions of the same thing, then you just don't have to think about it. You just get up and you know, I'm wearing this blue shirt and I'm wearing pants just like this. Easy peasy. Adobe is seeing discounts on clothing that is in line with discounts seen on Black Friday. So for some industries, they're seeing demand like it's Black Friday and others are having to discount like it's Black Friday to try to overcome the drop in sales. So I guess, actually, if you're gonna need more clothes when this is all over, then perhaps now is a good time for you to save some money. Matter of fact, I need to check and see if these shirts are on sale, maybe pick me up just a few more at a discount. One other interesting finding is that e-commerce purchases of wine, beer, spirits, and accessories saw a 74% increase in April, but that may have just <laughs> been mostly me. Sorry about that, but it's it's been a long month. But what all of this means is that some industries, like grocery, are now getting a glimpse of what their inevitable future would have been. The big winners are obviously companies that have already had solid e-commerce experiences or were at least set up to make the shift to focus in online sales. Big retailers like Walmart are the real winners here. Their app downloads have increased 460% and was the number one most downloaded shopping app in early April with downloads 20% higher than Amazon's. Of course, stats like that always make me wonder, was Walmart's app downloads higher than Amazon's because everyone already has the Amazon app but had to go download Walmart's because nobody had it? Perhaps, but regardless, Walmart is seeing a huge surge. Industry experts seem to agree with me that this shift to online ordering for things like groceries could be permanent. It was the direction we were all heading anyway. It was just gonna take some time to get people to adopt it until we were all forced to. Turns out, having no other choice is a strong motivator to get people to do something. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments, and you know the drill. Like, subscribe, notification bells, all that nonsense if you're into this kind of content. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.